Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to explain the application of and the differences between a variety of file formats used to store photographs, diagrams and other images. So let's launch into the wonderful world of JPEG, PNG, TIFF, PSD, AI, SVG and their many digital friends. To understand different image file formats, we first need a knowledge of some key digital imaging concepts. These are the difference between raster and vector graphics, lossy and lossless compression, and finally, colour spaces, bit depth and alpha channels. Starting with raster versus vector graphics, raster formats store images as a grid of pixels or what is known as a bitmap. Meanwhile, vector formats store each part of an image as a geometric formula. This means that if you scale up a vector image, it's always sharp. In contrast, if we enlarge a raster image, we see the jagged edges of the pixels. Because of this, raster file formats are best suited for storing photographs and other images that are hard to mathematically define. On the other hand, vector formats are more suitable for images that include logos, text and other elements that must always remain sharp even when significantly enlarged. To reduce file size, most raster formats apply lossy or non-lossy compression. Lossy compression actually discards data, so reducing image quality. A common lossy compression technique is discrete cosine transform, or DCT, which approximates the content of an image using trigonometric functions. Non-lossy compression reduces file size while retaining all of the information in an image. Here, a common method is run-length encoding, or RLE. This works by storing sequences of identical bytes as a single value followed by a count. Most image formats store data in three colour channels, red, green and blue, or what is described as an RGB colour space. However, for professional printing, some formats also offer four-channel colour using cyan, magenta, yellow and black, or CMYK. In addition, some formats also support a single black and white or grayscale channel. Different image formats also store different quantities of colour information. Most formats can support 8 bits per channel or 8 BPC, which, with a 3-channel RGB colour space, delivers what is known as 24-bit colour. Whilst this is absolutely sufficient for most purposes, some file formats also support 16 and even 32 bits per colour channel, which provides greater flexibility in image manipulation. At the other end of the spectrum, a few image formats offer the opportunity to store just 8-bit colour, which limits the number of colours in an image to 256 in order to save file space. In addition to colour values, some raster formats can store individual pixel transparency using what is known as an alpha channel. So, for example, an image stored in an RGB colour space with an alpha channel added becomes RGBA. Here, in the GIMP photo editor, I've loaded in two images, one of which has a white background and is stored in three colour channels, and one of which has a transparent background and hence has an additional alpha channel. Images with alpha channel transparency are very useful for things like overlaying captions in the video editor. So here, for example, in DaVinci Resolve, I've got an image with a caption which has got an alpha channel. And if I just drag it down to the timeline, you can see it gets overlaid on the image and we don't have to apply any additional keying effect. And here, I've also got the image with an alpha channel from earlier that we can similarly pull down to the timeline there. And again, it's directly overlaid using the alpha channel. Right, let's now turn to individual image file formats, the most common of which is JPEG. This was created by the Joint Photographic Experts Group in 1992 and can have the file extension JPG or JPEG. JPEGs store raster images in either an RGB or CMYK colour space, 
with DCT lossy compression. However, an alpha channel cannot be included and bit depth is limited to 8BPC or 24-bit colour. JPEG files can be captured by most cameras and phones and can be read by almost all digital imaging and related software. JPEG is therefore a solid choice for saving and sharing photographs, including images published on the web. This said, if necessary, JPEGs can be used for print and other publishing applications. Although, if this is the case, JPEG files should be saved with high quality compression at the maximum available resolution and ideally in a CMYK colour space. PNG stands for Portable Network Graphic and was created in 1994. Like JPEG, it stores compressed raster images, but here using non-lossy compression. Unlike JPEG, PNG files can also include an alpha channel, which makes them very useful for things like website logos and video captions. On the negative side, PNGs are limited to either 8-bit or 24-bit colour and can only use an RGB colour space. PNG files that offer 8-bit colour are usually termed PNG8, whilst those offering 24-bit colour are usually called PNG24. Finally, PNG32 files include the alpha channel, allocating 8 bits per pixel to each of their red, green, blue and alpha channels. GIF, or the Graphics Interchange Format, was created by CompuServe in 1987. Again, this is a raster-based format, here with lossless compression. However, file sizes generally remain small as a maximum of 8-bit colour is supported. As a result, GIF images are limited to a maximum palette of 256 colours. Nevertheless, they remain useful for web graphics, not least because they can store animations as well as still images. TIFF, or the Tagged Image File Format, was first released in 1986, with its specification last updated in 2002. TIFF files store raster images with no compression, non-lossy compression or lossy compression, depending on the options chosen when a file is saved. TIFF also supports RGB and CMYK, as well as black and white images, and offers either 8, 16 or 32 bits per channel and, for good measure, an alpha channel is also included. As all of this suggests, TIFF is ideal for professional graphics, especially in print applications, and enjoys wide software support. Some high-end digital cameras also directly shoot TIFF files. PSD, or Photoshop Document, is the native Adobe Photoshop file format. It mainly stores non-compressed raster images, although text and certain image elements are saved as vectors, which allows them to remain editable and scalable without resolution loss. PSD supports RGB and CMYK, as well as black and white images, and supports 8, 16 or 32 bits per channel. PSD images can be stored in multiple layers, each of which may contain its own alpha channel. It's therefore not surprising that, whilst proprietary, PSD is the dominant standard for professional raster image creation and manipulation. RAW is a native raster digital camera format that preserves information that's lost when shooting JPEG or TIFF files. It offers an RGB colour space, with either 12, 14 or 16 bits per channel, depending on the camera model. Each image is, in effect, a direct binary dump from the camera's sensor, so no data is thrown away by the camera's internal image processing. Raw files can be read by Photoshop and other major image editing programs, as well as specialist utility software. But the majority of image viewing and editing applications cannot load a raw file. Cameras from Panasonic, Lekia and Casio actually use the .raw extension for their raw file format. However, Nikon raw files are usually .nef, which stands for Nikon Electronic Format, 
while Canon cameras currently save .cr2 or Canon RAW version 2 files. Other RAW file extensions include .arw, which is used by Sony, as well as .dng, .dcr and .nrw. Now, I could continue for a very long time detailing additional raster file formats. But JPEG, PNG, GIF, TIFF, PSD and RAW are the most common. Others to be aware of include XCF, which is the native format used by the GIMP photo editor, BMP or the bitmap image file which was developed by Microsoft, and TGA which was developed by TrueVision and is often known as Targa. All vector-based formats store each image element mathematically. This preserves resolution at all scales, negates the need for alpha channels to deliver transparency, and allows a wide range of colour spaces to be used. There are therefore fewer fundamental differences between different vector-based image formats than between their raster-based comrades. In professional publishing, the dominant file format used for vector-based artwork is AI, which is the native format of Adobe Illustrator, although AI files can be edited in many other packages. Other popular vector formats include CDR, which is the native file format for Corel Draw, and SVG, which is very widely used and stands for scalable vector graphics. SVG was developed by the World Wide Web Consortium as an open standard, and is the native file format in the Inkscape Vector Illustration package. SVG enjoys widespread software support, including being readable in all modern browsers. Two other notable formats are EPS, which stands for Encapsulated Postscript, and PDF, or the Portable Document Format. Both of these are very widely used for the delivery of final artwork or typeset documents. EPS and PDF are also both largely vector-based. However, it's possible to embed raster images within EPS or PDF files, so allowing for a mix of resolution-independent text and graphics alongside photographs, scans or bitmap illustrations. Many, many years ago, I was learning the Lightwave 3D modelling package, and I had a particular issue that came up, and I contacted Newtech, the publishers of Lightwave, who were very helpful, and as part of our email exchange, they said I should be using the PNG file format for my textures in Lightwave rather than JPEG or a Windows bitmap file. And that was extremely helpful advice, and ever since that time, I've used the PNG file format in lots and lots of situations. It's very helpful to me, particularly with its uh, alpha layer, if you use a 32-bit PNG. It was transformative, that moment of just learning about a particular file format that changed the way I work. And I hope with this video, in explaining all the different image formats I've talked about, maybe someone out there will have a similar experience and go, ah oh, yes, if only I used this file format, it would make life so much easier. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.